So I'm thinking it's time for some pot pie. Specifically, Amy's Vegetable Gluten-Free Pot Pie. I bought this package for about $4.70, which is a little costly compared to most other pot pies, especially ones that are gluten-filled. The package states that it is gluten-free. Also, it uses non-GMO ingredients, so that's always nice, but that adds to the price increase. Make sure you take a look at the back. It does also state that it's made in a facility that processes wheat. So if you're really sensitive, probably want to stay away from this product. So I'm not sure that there is such thing as a frozen pot pie that uses great ingredients, but this one at least uses plenty of organic ingredients. Uh, you will also see a bit of rice flour in there, potatoes, you've got uh, uh, a bit of carrots, peas, all those things are, are incorporated in this, but then as you read further, you find plenty of ingredients that you just don't know why they're in there for. Obviously, they're there to thicken things up, to, to make a crispy crust, but uh, not the most natural the further you read on. The nutrition facts state that there's one serving per container. So eat the whole pie and you get 490 calories, 24 grams of fat, 10 grams of saturated fat, 35 milligrams of cholesterol, plenty of sodium, 24% of your daily intake on that, 580 milligrams, uh, total carbohydrates of 60 grams, some dietary fiber, 5 grams of that, sugar, as well as 8 grams of protein. So obviously this is pretty loaded in calories and fat, so keep that in mind if you're going to consume this on the regular. It might be better as just sort of the occasional treat for you. This pot pie is pretty easy to make. All you have to do is preheat an oven to 400 degrees. Remove the plastic wrap that covers the pie and leave in the actual tray that it comes in. That's going to help it cook. You're going to put that tray with the pie in it over a cookie sheet so that in case you get any spillage in your oven you won't get any burning. Then cook that for 30 to 35 minutes. Let it sit for just a bit so it can cool off and the flavors can come together and then you should be able to enjoy. You could also microwave this if you wanted to, uh, three and a half to four minutes on high, but really why would you? Uh, get a oven, use it, put it in an oven and, and actually eat it that way. Let me tell you, as this thing was cooking, it smelled delicious. So I had really, really high hopes based just upon the smell. It really filled the entire house with what a pot pie should. So uh, as I pulled out of the oven, you can see it got a nice crispy crust there. Texture's quite nice on the interior. A uh, little dense in my opinion, would like a little more, uh, uh, little more liquid, but uh, I can't complain, that's for sure. Unfortunately, the flavor actually didn't stand up to the hype when it comes to how great it smelled. Uh, it really came out quite boring, quite bland. Um, I suppose if you're in a pinch or if you just absolutely love pot pies that it would be worth it, but uh, I think the flavor fell really short. Overall, this product gets a 5.2 out of 10. Uh, it's pretty easy to make, great texture, great smell like I said, but the flavor just really brought down the, uh, the goal too much. So um, really what it did is it made me just crave a gluten-filled homemade pot pie. And as you all probably know, that's kind of the worst thing a product could do. So I probably won't be getting this again. If you found this information to be helpful and you'd like me to do more gluten-free reviews, then help me hit the video goal of adding 2,000 more likes to this very video. Also, don't forget to subscribe. That way you'll get all my newest videos as soon as they get published on YouTube.